This week on 20 TV Insider, the Discovery Canyon football team gets in a high scoring affair at home. Rampart's football team continues to overpower opponents on both offense and defense. Superintendent Mark Hatchell takes on some Olympic athletes to encourage reading. But first, see how District 20 is embracing technology in the classroom. You're watching 20 TV Insider from Academy District 20 in Colorado Springs, Colorado. Hello and welcome to 20 TV Insider, your weekly look into events in Academy School District 20. I'm Brian German. Thanks for joining us today. Well, having cell phones or laptops with you during class may be considered a distraction. However, this could be changing soon. Joining us now is 20 TV reporter Tasha Olson. Tasha, how is it changing in D20? Brian, District 20 is leading the way when it comes to technology in the classroom. More and more teachers are actually encouraging the use of devices during class, and the results have been positive. Heather Scott has been teaching high school students for years and has learned what works and what does not in the classroom. I feel like we get deeper into things and I feel like I also have more participation than I would otherwise. She is one of the teachers that has recognized the role of technology in her students' lives and has decided to incorporate it within her classes by encouraging BYOD, bring your own device. They will... <laughs> go and do searches on the internet and find things that I didn't know existed and then come back and amaze me pretty much every time with what they can do. Scott believes that allowing students to use their laptops and tablets for schoolwork is beneficial for both the teacher and student. Like we can do research projects, we can write an essay, we can really like it opens up an amazing like range of choices of things that we could be doing. Although there have been no regrets with this technological triumph, there have been obstacles for them to overcome. That it's problem solving and that those moments are teachable moments. And so I try to model with my behavior, even when I'm frustrated, that that's not a reason to give up or to not use the technology anymore. Scott says she would recommend other teachers implement a device-friendly classroom. She is looking to increase the number of classes she teaches that includes BYOD. Brian, I think that it's so great that they can now incorporate technology in their education because it is such a big part of their lives. It certainly is. Thank you very much for the report, Tasha. Students at D20 Elementary School are working hard to earn a special visit from Olympic athletes. Academy International Elementary is competing in the Reading Olympics, an event held in Colorado to raise money for their school. In this year's Olympics, students were asked to pledge more than 100,000 hours of reading. Students can ask family, friends, or anyone else they might know to pledge a certain amount of minutes of reading or to just give a set donation to the school. As part of the program, two United States Olympic fencers were able to give the kids a demonstration of what it takes to compete in that sport. District 20 Superintendent Dr. March Hatchell even joined in on the fun. Students were also told if they reached their goal, the Olympians would return and give a hands-on demonstration to teach kids how to fence. We've all seen them, the people who park in a fire lane or handicap spot because they're just going into a building for a minute. Not only are they annoying, they're also breaking the law. And now those people may be punished for doing so on district property. Earlier this year, D20 safety and security team worked with the City of Colorado Springs to have the right to write parking tickets. The tickets are limited to people blocking handicapped spots without a permit and those in a fire lane. And so far, the new enforcement has had the desired effect. And so what we're hoping is that we get voluntary uh, cooperation uh, with parents, students and staff to make sure that those spaces are available for those intended purposes. The parking tickets include fees ranging from $70 to $250. Because they're authorized by the city, that means the tickets must be paid or contested through the municipal courts, just like any other parking ticket. Well, the Liberty football team picked up just three wins all of last year, but only two weeks into this season, they're already 2-0. Coming up next, see how the Lancers are turning heads with a stifling defense and a timely offense. One part excellent, one part inspiration, one part preparation for outstanding education. Academy School District 20, where dreams take
They said I couldn't dream. Called me a piece of trash and swore that's all I'd ever be. Said a bottle couldn't see the ocean. Give up. Go back to the dumpster. But I didn't listen. I made my way. And now, I am what I've always wanted to be. Welcome back to 20TV Insider. The Discovery Canyon football team took a hard loss in their opening game of the season. They look to rebound in game two, hosting Holy Family in what would be a back and forth ball game. And Holy Family would get on the board first. Michael Zeman, right up the middle, zoop, breaks one tackle, goes 54 yards for the touchdown. Holy Family would miss the two point conversion try, but they still had the lead six to nothing. DCC would get on the board here with a high snap ryan weber johnny on the spot for the special teams he recovers it in the end zone that ties it up they missed the conversion still 6-6 dcc then josh tomzak 65 yards going around the outside taking it to the house once again they missed the two-pointer but the thunder had a 12-6 lead holy family not to be outdone chris helbig Goes up top to Bryce Baderas, a 13-yard touchdown pass. This time the two-pointer is good. Holy Family leads it 14-12. Fourth quarter, Holy Family up 42-32. Tom Jack again, nice moves, cuts outside, 29 yards for the score. The extra point was good. Discovery Canyon was within three, but Holy Family just kept putting points on the board. Chris Helbig this time goes deep downfield to Joe Golter, makes a nice catch. Not sure why anyone stopped. He goes 65 yards. Holy Family up 56-45. They went for two and got it. But Discovery Canyon kept clawing back. Matt Call, the quarterback sneak from two yards out. The Thunder takes the lead 60-56. to 32.3 seconds left, but Holy Family started to drive from the 20. A few plays later, they get that play. Helbig to Golter, 3.7 seconds left. A barn burn over Holy Family wins it. The final 64-60. DCC drops to 0-2 on the year. Well, the Liberty football team, hoping another year under head coach Mark Seitz can help them reach their first winning season since 2009. They're already 1-0 on the season. The Lancers would welcome Widefield to District 20 Stadium this weekend. No score in the first Liberty special teams. The punt goes off the Widefield player's heel and it's recovered by Johnny on the spot junior Gerald rushing. Still no score in the second, however, and Liberty would finally get on the board. Quarterback Hunter Warenga, he's going to have a special season for the Lancers. Watch this here. Nice fake goes up top to 6'6 senior Trevor Gifford for the score. Liberty takes a 7 to nothing lead in this one. More special teams play. Truly special for the Lancers. How about a fake punt? Cole Pelt. Look at the big man. Ramble up the middle, getting some nice blocks. Nobody touches him. He goes 45 yards for the touchdown. The camera's shaking. He's so excited. Missed extra point. Liberty took a 13-0 lead at the half. Fourth quarter, same score. Wide fields, TJ Davis to Tavion Valentine. He scores. They missed the extra point. Liberty up 13-6. You got to be careful on that asphalt, buddy. Uh, yeah, I tried to tell him. Same score. Pelt runs it in, pelting people from one yard out. Liberty wins it 20-6. They move to 2-0 and on the season. Well, the Rampart football team also had a chance to go to 2-0 and on the year as they hosted in-town rival Coronado. The Rams would look to avenge their 42-29 loss last year to the Cougars. First quarter, they're getting it done. Quarterback Parker Humphrey goes 31 yards to Clayton Hacker. The Rams take a 7 to nothing lead. Second quarter, Clayton Hacker, the quarterback keeper, a two-yard run, Rampart up 14 to nothing at the half. Fourth quarter, it's Hacker again at quarterback, and he hands off to Sam Schiller from five yards out. The easy run, Rampart goes up 28 nothing. They would go on to shut out their second opponent in a row. During those two games, they've outscored those teams 76 to nothing. Well, Rampart's girls volleyball team is still trying to find the high-powered offense that led them to the state semifinals last year. They hosted perennial tournament team Lakewood in a matchup they would could see again come playoff time. 
The Rams flying high early on. They take game one 25 to 18 in quick fashion. But the Tigers, you know them, they would storm back. They got the second game 25 to 23. Rampart once again showed its power, hitting with a 25-17 win in the third set. Lakewood forced a fifth set with a 25-19 win in Game 4. The Tigers then went on a late run in the final set to win the match. 15-10 in that last game, 3-2 in the match. Rampart drops to 4-2 on the season. They'll head to Ponderosa High School on Tuesday. Well, we're picking up where our live broadcast schedule this week, two games will be streamed on our website. We'll start on Tuesday with Pine Creek hosting defending 4A state champion Air Academy in boys soccer. The game gets underway at 6.30 p.m. Game two will be Wednesday at 4.30 as Discovery Canyon welcomes in Harrison in a non-conference boys soccer matchup. And as always, you can watch those games plus all of our archived broadcasts on our website by visiting asd20.org slash 20 TV sports. If you have ideas or topics that you would like us to cover, give us a call 719-234-1780 or you can send us an email 20tv at asd20.org. Thanks for joining us today. We'll see you next time on 20TV Insider.